Hi, welcome to Vexcode VR with Aposteriori. Uh, today I will be teaching you how to go through the disk maze. Let's start. Let's bring up the disk maze playground first. Click on playground, select disk maze. Once we have our disk maze playground, maybe I'll expand it so we can see it clearly. Uh, when you look at it from 2D, it's hard uh, to tell exactly what's going on, but basically you have these uh, green areas, blue areas, and one red area. And the challenge is, if you look at the activities related to disk maze, <coughs> is to solve the disk maze by uh, following certain rules. Whenever you see a green area, you turn to the right. Whenever you see a blue area, you turn to the left. Um, after turning, you must continue going forward until uh, the next color. And when you get to red, you stop. So green means right, blue means left, red means stop. And that's it. Um, if we do that, we'll be able to have our robot go uh, uh, through the maze. It might be easier to see what's going on if we take a, view, a look at the 3D view. And now we can see that there are, uh, there are these uh, standing up lenses. Um, so they look a little bit like radar stations. And next to them, there, or right in front of them, there are um, matching color areas. So you have these green disks uh, together with green areas, blue disks together with blue areas, and this one red disk at the other end of the field. Okay, so uh, that's the three-dimensional view just to show you. Now that we have a sense of what the algorithm is for uh, solving this, right on green, left on blue, stop on red, uh, we can start uh, programming it. The first uh, thing we should do uh, when we start is to move forward. So I have a simple drive forward block that I took from the drivetrain area, and uh, that will get my robot to start moving forward towards the next area. And when I run it, I can see that you know our robot never gets a instruction to do anything other than move forward. So it's constantly moving forward. Eventually, it might tip over, uh, drive over the uh, <laughs> drive over the the disc. And um, okay, now that we know how to drive forward, we're happy with that. The next thing to do is, if we see green, turn to the right. Now, how do we do that so that we keep asking that question over and over again? Uh, the over and over and over again part of my sentence should clue you in that you need some kind of a loop. So I would go to the control area where we have our loops. Uh, a repeat for a certain amount of time might be useful if um, we knew exactly how far away every station is and we could repeat a certain number of steps towards it. But we don't really know these things. Uh, all we know is that we should move forward and when we get somewhere, turn. So when we don't know how far to go and what we're tr our algorithm needs to be asking constantly, did we get it yet? Did we hit it yet? Did we see green yet? Did we see green debt? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And when you want to do something like that, uh, your best bet is to use something like a wait until or repeat until or while something is happening or while something is not happening. In this case, we want to start driving forward and wait wait until um, we see green, right? So this is like, uh, don't ask me again, just wait until we see green. I don't wanna repeat it over and over again. So we can use the wait until paradigm and of course we need to be able to see green and for that we go to sensing and we're gonna find our uh, front eye, the eye that looks forward in front of our um, robot. Uh, let's look for a second at our robot to see where is that front eye. So in the front of the robot we have uh, these two sensors on the bottom. These are the bumper sensors. Then we have the front eye that looks forward. There's also the other eye that looks down. And those are our uh, uh, four main sensors and we also have the distance sensor as well. Okay, um, back to our algorithm. So we're going to drive forward and wait for further instructions until your front eye detects a particular color. Uh, and we can choose which color that is. And we know that we're going to hit green, so we're going to say green. 
All right, that's the first uh, the first part we're going to go drive forward until we detect green. So we're waiting until we detect green, and once we detected green, what do we do? Next step is to turn to the right. And if we just use this block, we'll start turning to the right until the next um, thing that tells us what to do. But we actually want to make a perfect right, uh, 90 degree right turn. So we can use the turn right for 90 degrees for this. So now let's take a look at what this code does. Um, it's not a lot of code, but we started driving forward. Now we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Once we hit the green, we're turning for 90 degrees. And that's exactly uh, what we expected to happen. Let me move this a little bit to the right. We see the entire board, but we can also see all the code. So drive forward. That's our first uh, uh, com command. And then we wait until front eye detects green, and then we turn right, and then we stop um, uh, because there's no other uh, indication of what the robot needs to do past this. So at this point, the execution is done and we've turned right and there's no more commands. Uh, next, we pr pretty much want to do the exact same thing. We want to drive forward, wait until we see this time blue, and then turn to the left. So, uh, you know, we have this um, pretty, uh, pretty paradigm here. Uh, we can just keep duplicating uh, bits of it. Next, we will drive forward, wait until we see a blue, and turn to the left. And uh, maybe we'll need to do that more than once. Turn one time, two times, three times, four times. We'll need to do this even four times, maybe. So we can duplicate the, the right hand, uh, the left hand turn on blue uh, paradigm. So we have two different things. One is go forward until you see green and turn right. And the other one, go forward until you see blue and turn left. And both of those code sections uh, look very similar and we can just keep building our uh, code based on these. So right, left, left, uh, two more lefts if you remember. Left, 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 then a right, then a left, then a right, then a stop. And in the last one we'll need to have a different one. We'll have to have a uh, not one of these forward blue left or forward green right. We'll need to have a forward red stop. That will be our last one. One cool enhancement you can make to this code is that you can add some modularization. And by modularization, I mean that um, you know we, we have these packets, these paradigms, these uh, short algorithms for doing a specific thing. Go forward, detect blue, and then turn left, or go forward, detect green, and then turn right. Well, we can package these inside functions, and then we could call the functions instead of calling these three um, lines over and over again. And the way you make a function is you go to the My Blocks tab, you click on Make a Block, and then you give your function a name where it says Block Name. We can call it Green and Right, because whenever we see green, we want to turn right. And we can define this block, this function, as the Green Then Turn Right paradigm. Okay, so forward wait till green turn right and we can make a second block called blue and left for the other type of function that we want which is whenever wait until we see go forward until we see blue and then turn left so now that we have these functions we can just look at our uh, board and based on whichever uh, color we need to look for next we can call the right function so first we need a green and right function and then we'll need a blue and left function and then we'll need a blue and left function again and then we'll need a blue and left function again and then we'll need a blue and left function again and so forth and this will take us you know roughly to the middle of the of the course and we'll, we'll need to keep doing this until the end and Maybe you can create the last function, uh, like mine, and make sure you have you have a red and stop function as well. Okay, so now that you have all the building blocks for creating uh, the basic um, solution for this, I'll pause the video here. I'll let you finish uh, creating the the functions uh, for red and stop, and finish uh, organizing which functions need to be called when. Uh, so that you can create the entire uh, solution that gets you all the way to the red area.
Okay, have fun.